Hey everyone, and welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where today we will be listening to a story of absolutely unheard of proportion. This story was submitted by user slash mostly gruntled, and honestly, let's just get into it. Firstly, this didn't happen to me. I was with the person when they received a phone call about this issue. Then he explained it all to me. He's not on Reddit, so I'm sharing it. It's priceless. Listed buildings, these are important to the story. In the UK, there's a system for preserving ancient and important buildings. If a building has historical importance, it is known as a listed building, and the rules about how it's developed, maintained or improved are very strict. I need to be vague about the work involved, otherwise it's too easy to identify the parties involved. My friend David is skilled in a very niche area of construction. He repairs and renovates buildings using a very old construction method that hasn't been common for several centuries. All his work is on conservation projects and listed buildings. Work was required on a grade one listed property. The overall building work was being done by my main contractor, ACC Limited. One part of the work is very specialized. The contractor's managers didn't know anyone who did it, so the architect gave them a list of qualified people. The contractors chose my friend because he had the earliest availability. Five days into the work, the owner of ACC Limited, the main contractor company, arrived on site. He was throwing his weight around and being a noisy gobshite. These are David's words. David was just doing his job and ignored him. Noisy gobshite told one of his carpenters to get him a coffee. The carpenter disappeared, Noisy Gobshite continued wandering and gobbing off about delays costing him a fortune. 15 minutes after the carpenter had disappeared, the Noisy Gobshite asked my friend a question. Where is that effing chippy with my coffee? Don't know? Go and find out. I'm only here for this job, pointing at the walls. I don't work for ACC Limited. I don't give F whether you're an employee or a subcontractor. You still work for me. Now go and find my effing coffee. Firstly, I don't appreciate being talked to like that. And secondly, my contract with you is to do these walls, nothing more. I'm definitely not a gopher. Oh, you don't appreciate being talked to like that, do you? Which subcontractor do you work for? None, I'm self-employed, it's just me. An effing day laborer? And you've got the nerve to talk to me like that? Do you know who I am? Yep. Well, you're effing fired. Get off the effing site now. Okay, put it in writing. F off. Just get off the effing site. David pulled his phone out and started recording. Okay, I'll go. I just want proof you told me to go. Noisy gobshite grabbed David's hand holding the phone and screamed into the phone. Get off the effing site, you effing idiot. You're fired. If you're still here in 10 effing minutes, I'll have you effing thrown out. Cool. No problem. He picked up all of his kit and walked away. As he was leaving, the contractor's site manager passed him. Ironically, with a coffee for the boss and with a smile said, You're leaving early, David? Bloody part-timers. No, your boss just fired me. Our contract has ended. Sorry, mate. No, 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 no. Let me sort this out. Wait, please, please wait. David left. The site manager was losing his ish because he knew something that noisy gobshite didn't. Only seven people in the UK are qualified to do the work. They all have a waiting list and David had been the only one available. By the time he was home, he had 12 missed calls. That was Thursday. Two working days missed so far. He said he'll go back, but only if he gets paid for the extra days and has a genuine apology in person from the boss. I met my friend when he was getting a call from the site manager saying the boss apologizes but is out of the country, so can't apologize face to face. David also told me he phoned the other specialists to warn them that they'd all been phoned on Friday, begging them to do the job. Nobody took the work. They're all booked solid. David also phoned the architect to warn him. Situations like this, some unscrupulous contractors try to botch the job and fake the work. David is going to stick to his guns. 
pay for all missed days, plus a face-to-face -face apology. He's sure he'll get it. I've said I'll pay anything to watch the face-to-face -face apology. And here is an update. The site manager phoned to say he was told by Noisy Gobshite to threaten legal action if David doesn't finish the job. The site manager was very embarrassed and apologetic. David reminded him he didn't leave and has proof that he was fired. Site manager phoned again to say Noisy Gobshite will apologize face to face on Friday. Can David start tomorrow? David said no. Following the threat of legal action, the conditions are different. 1. A face-to-face -face apology before he restarts work. Added pay for wasted days. Payment of full contract value upfront before work starts. And 4. All must happen by Thursday. That's the last day he can start and still expect to finish before his next booking. If he also works for weekends, he has just enough time. I asked why he isn't charging a huge extra amount for the guy being such a jerk. He said it doesn't look good if you take advantage of companies when they're under time pressure. Not the done thing. It seems that one of my friends is an 18th century gentleman. And a small correction concerning that only 7 other people do the work, it's 7 companies so roughly 20 people who can do the job. Unfortunately, it seems there'll be no apology. David has discovered that the site manager was blamed for not making Noisy Gobshite aware of the situation beforehand and was fired. David contacted the operations director for ACC Limited, Noisy Gobshite's number two, and informed them that an apology is no longer required as he will not be returning to the job. The ops director apologized for everything and offered to renegotiate the money very generously. David told him that he had only considered going back to the job as a personal favor to the original site manager. Since he isn't there, he feels no obligation to return. Ops director said he'll get back to David, but he didn't say why. I asked why he didn't say, give him back his job or I won't come back. David said, noisy gobshite is too petty and weak to be told what to do by a craftsman. It will have to be the company's idea for the site manager to come back. If I tell them to bring him back, it won't happen. David says the site manager is great at his job, but is only four years from retirement, so it's not easy to find a job at 61. I've decided I like David even more than I did three days ago. Update 3. It's 2am here, we've just got back from the pub. David got a call while we were out from the sacked site manager. David updated the architect on the situation this afternoon. The architect contacted the sacked site manager to tell him about a company who need a site manager. The sacked site manager phoned David just before 9pm. I had to sit through the phone call, only hearing one side. I must have looked childishly excited, like I'd got a butt full of sparrows. Then David filled me in. The site manager rang him to thank him and find out his favorite drink so he can send him a bottle. He hasn't got the new job yet, but he's seeing them on Friday. Apparently, the architect's recommendation carries some weight, so he's optimistic. David refused at first. I didn't get you the job, the architect did. The site manager said, but you set all this in motion and told the architect that I'd been fired. Because of you, I never need to deal with that obnoxious pillock ever again. David wasn't specific about who the obnoxious pillock was. We'll have to guess. David said his drink is Cardu Gold Reserve. He said he'll accept a bottle only if A, the site manager gets the new job, and B, if the site manager will come over and drink the Cardu with David. It looks like the handsome scribe who did the enormously difficult, time-consuming job of skillfully writing the saga down on Reddit isn't included in the whiskey consumption. As David poetically put it, piss off knobhead, you can buy your own drink. All good news, hopefully, except that nobody gets to see the tosspot noisy gobshite eat trash when he has to apologize. I was looking forward to that. Update 4. Operations director for ACC Limited phoned David to suggest that they take the site manager back and generously renegotiate for money. David says they've missed the boat. There's no way he can finish the job on his own before he starts his next job. There's an absolute minimum of 11 days work left, if everything goes without a hitch. David's next job starts 4th of November, only 10 days left if he works both weekends. Too late? I wish I could be a fly on the wall when noisy gobshite is told. Update 7. 
David has heard that they're getting a Bulgarian to come over to do the job. David was grinning when he told me. He thinks he knows what will happen. There's a similar but different technique that was used on some 19th century buildings in Sofia. David thinks that the guy will use that technique. It looks similar, but two very important materials are different. David has decided to wait. He plans to let the Bulgarian finish the job and get paid. Then David is going to suggest to the planning department and the client that they check the two components. Unless the Bulgarian knows the 17th century English method, he will have used the wrong materials. It would mean ripping it out and starting again. They are incredibly strict with this type of work. I shouldn't want this so much, but I really hope this happens. I'm a petty man. Update 8. David has been told that the Bulgarian got straight to it and started work. He's had materials delivered, but from an ordinary building supplier. The stuff he needs to do the job properly is too bulky for him to bring with him, even if they sell it in Bulgaria. He hasn't ordered it from the UK supplier. There are three, but only one has enough for this job because they got it in for David. So unless it's coming by road and ferry, he's not using the right materials. David wouldn't allow it to go unreported, even if he wasn't annoyed about noisy gobshite. He got a genuine passion for looking after all these buildings he works on, and he is a purist when it comes to historical accuracy. So now I have to hold my water for three or four weeks. David says that if he's using more modern materials, he might finish sooner. Three weeks is the time it takes if you stay in the 17th century. And finally, three or four weeks later, update nine. The Bulgarian finished the job and went home two weeks ago. According to the people who met him, Stefan the Bulgarian was a good guy and very hard worker. He did 12 hour days and weekends so he could cut the cost of staying in the UK. Based on what we learned about Stefan, David's happy that we waited until Stefan got paid before he reported the work. David was already fairly sure that Stefan was not doing the job correctly. He had checked the three firms who were the only UK suppliers of the most obscure material involved, and none said they'd had an order from the site. Of course, it was possible that Stefan imported it, but nobody on site had seen an overseas material order. So as planned, David contacted the local authority planning department, the client and the architect and an organization called Historic England. He explained his concerns and the easiest, least intrusive way of testing. Then he waited for them to look into it. It only took a couple of days, but I can honestly say that I've never been so anxious or felt so invested in something that is none of my business. First report came from the architect. Wrong method used. Wrong method using the wrong materials. He'd used a 19th century Bulgarian technique not the 17th century English that is demanded. The architect was mad. David said he's never heard the architect use bad language before, but this phone call was blue. Apparently, noisy gobshite is called that ignorant effing cockwomble by the architect. David asked me what a cockwomble is. I had no idea. Suggestions are welcome. The architect said he was going to contact the local authority because he doesn't want them to think this is anything to do with him. The rest of the story came to David's second or third hand. He knows some of the staff from ACC. I asked if it was difficult to get them to tell him anything. He said they can't pick the phone up fast enough. The local authority planning officers visited the site and inspected the work. They told the contractor that the work was entirely wrong and must be cleared and done properly. Then it got interesting. The inspector had a look around the site and found an issue. I can't be specific about this because it would be too easy to identify the buildings involved. The contractor has destroyed part of the building. There was an internal feature that didn't look particularly important, but it's part of the roof structure. They removed it and put in a much better modern support. But they are not allowed to. Neither the project manager or the new site manager or staff knew the importance. Guess who ordered the cheap, quick option instead of it being repaired slowly? Of course, it was noisy gobshite. 
It's a criminal offense to destroy anything on this type of property. Jail time type of crime. Even if they don't go to jail, it's a massive fine. So everybody in that company is pointing fingers at each other and claiming no responsibility. Noisy Gobshite has claimed that he did not give the order to take out the internal parts of the roof structure. The project manager has email evidence he did. On Tuesday 19th, the client ordered all of the contractor staff off the site. They're having everything examined. It's almost certain they're firing the contractor. They've issued instructions for bids from new contractors. They'll also sue the contractor for the cost of repairing and replacing everything they've done wrong. The architects estimate this was £800,000. The local authority planning department wrote to the contractor outlining what they've done wrong and advising them on their plans to inspect and the possibility of prosecution. According to the staff, Noisy Gobshite disappeared to the lawyers on the day the letter arrived. David had three different people from ACC phone him within an hour when the news of the letter circulated around the staff. So now we're waiting for a few things. A client's inspection. If that confirms that ACC have damaged the site, then the client has the right to fire the contractor. ACC doesn't get paid and they have a massive repair bill. And two, a local authority inspection by conservation experts. If they've destroyed features in the property, the local authority will prosecute ACC as a company and the person who ordered it. David is very unhappy because the internal structure that has been destroyed can't be replaced. In his words, that wood's been sitting there doing its job for 400 years. Until that mayonnaise stain comes into the picture. Then it's gone and that's it. Never again. He seems genuinely sad. I'm betting that Noisy Gobshite is wishing he'd got his own coffee on that day last month. And a couple more corrections that I'll summarize here a little more quickly. So in a nutshell, legal action will take a while and OP's not sure if Noisy Gobshite will even be prosecuted. Apparently this stuff takes absolutely forever. On the upside though, the fired site manager got the job. He got a contract for 18 months and David got his promised drink and even OP got a share of it. So all's well that ends well, I guess. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this story. It was absolutely amazing. Probably one of the best I've heard on this subreddit. And if you did like it, then make sure to subscribe to the channel for Reddit videos every second day. But with that said, guys, that's it from me. I hope you all enjoyed and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.